Hello. Hi. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Raiders. Thanks for coming in. Happy to see you. We're just getting started, so it's the perfect time to raid. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that are just joining us on Sunday night for the first time, welcome to the Sean and Shannon Power Hour, where we... Hello. Uh, <laughs> good job. Not a, not a moment too soon. Where we recap uh, our weekly actual play D, D campaign which is on monday nights um and tonight mm -hmm. we have two sessions to recap because uh last week one of us was in disney world and was not able to do the power hour so uh we got guess two... which one guess guess just guess just guess it was sean you're right <laughs> no i was celebrating my birthday oh yeah how in... was that it was. Well, I know your birthday. Your birthday was two weeks ago because that was our first power hour. But yes, you it was celebrated fun. on mm -hmm. twenty six. Sixth. Yeah, it's not March anymore. I need to, or it's not February anymore. It is exactly it's, March. It, it, shh, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's this is actually what most of the power hour is is yeah, us picking on each other. Yes, it's quite fun. We're very good at it. Um, it's the best month, in my opinion. And do you want to I know don't why? know. I think February is pretty well, damn good. I don't know. I don't know if you know why, Sean, because you didn't know when my birthday was. Yeah, your birthday is uh, March 25th. Yeah, only after guessing April and May. Uh, I and knew then it March was... 24th. Uh, well, you know, I openly admit I don't know birthdays very well, just like the great Bernie Sanders. <laughs> okay. He recently had an interview where he. Oh, really? People. Yeah, because he doesn't wish people have a birthday, and neither do I. <laughs> That's not true. Because you I forget. Say, you say happy birthday to me every year. That's, That's also because I'm <laughs> obnoxious about my birthday. Yeah. Guess how many days is my birthday? Guess how many days? How many weeks? How many? It's my birthday. Whee! Because yeah, I just love. She's I already love, starting it. I love birthdays. Already starting it. Yep. I love birthdays. <laughs> how was your week? <laughs> it was good. It was good. I uh, was in Disney for the weekend last weekend. I did the um, the half. Uh, Disney Princess Half Marathon Race Weekend. It's a mouthful to say. So, and that is a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon in a matter of three days. Been doing it for, I want to say, seven or eight years now. It's a fun tradition that I do with my mama and uh, various members of our family. It's never the same who comes each year, but it's uh, always me and her. Uh, so that was fun. I did all three. Did not think I was going to be able to do all three. And then severely paid the price when I got back because... I bet. Oh, my God. I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday. It's not like you trained for this. No. God, no. <laughs> and, and I never usually do. But the last times I didn't, I hadn't had a kid four months beforehand. So... That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, and a little bit of Thursday, I felt like I had a fever. Body aches, chills, like sweating and then freezing and like no energy, and it was just awful. Um, so, yeah, I'm not gonna do, not gonna do quite like that again. I mean, I'll still do the Well, races, next year you might be but next better. Year, yes, true. You know, you'll, I might, but. You also could, you know. I could trade Run for a it. couple times before I going. Could. You know what I did do, though? We <laughs> Maybe have, once. We have, a, <laughs> we have a soul cycle bike, and I did that a couple times. I also dance that... once a week, which is good cardio. Okay, so... okay, okay. But again, but I'd only been doing it for two months. The... <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's it's a sounds like a lot to do cold. <laughs> 22.4 miles to do cold. Yeah, in three days. That's, that's a lot. But I got my medals are really pretty. <laughs> and that's the reason. <laughs> They're, they're so pretty. <laughs> it's worth the absolute devastation it, of your body. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. Um, but I'm finally feeling better. Thank goodness. That's and I'm good. getting back into my routine. It was hard to be away from my little man for that long. But he was very well taken care of. And now yeah, we're her back. little man. She's talking about her husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little guy. <laughs> it's just it was, a little guy. He's, yeah, it's not true. He's very tall. He's taller um, than me. He's taller. <laughs> yes, he's taller than me. And Milo is gonna be. He's gonna be tall. He's he's currently, well, at his last checkup last month, he's in the eighty fourth percentile for height. Mm, well, don't give him a bunch of cherry coke as a child. There's a story there, and I'd like to hear it. Because I was in the upper percentiles for height. Oh no! And I'm five six. 
<laughs> you had a bunch and of I blamed cherry, the cherry coke. coke I drank when I was a child. Yes, a lot. Yeah, is it, yeah, is my, it comparable my, to your diet coke consumption now? Well, that's I became a diet coke consumption <laughs> in in uh, college, really. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I was supposed to, supposed to be, you know quite tall actually for my family mm -hmm. um the doctor told my parents it was because I, I had i i was quite uh um had a lot of testosterone <laughs> um and if you have a lot of testosterone as a young boy mm -hmm. it actually can halt your, your really? growth it can close your growth plates early really uh, so that's why if you look at me in a picture mm -hmm. or my feet are cut off mm -hmm. you could think i was five ten six feet easily um uh, but then once my feet come in, you see that my legs look like they stopped growing. Like they should have, like my they legs should've... look like they should be longer. Um, Cause I have like from the knees up, I look like a very, like my body's long. Yeah. But then I have very short calves and ankles. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. So my, my bones didn't grow as much as they should have. <laughs> oh, no. Not like does a it, lot. Like I don't think like I would have actually been like six hurt? feet tall. I think I would have been like five, eight, five, like, ten. Do you feel no, like, no, like, no, this is just something that happens when yeah. when when young. Uh, well, I guess really any child um, has a high more testosterone in their huh. body. It can it can cause a, a, a you to stop growing because my body thinks I'm done with puberty mm. earlier than I should have. Got it. Which is also why I had a beard in when I was you know twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've had his beard for uh, a beard for as long as I've known you, which was high yeah. school. Yeah. So like like I oh, it, my body my body was essentially like yeah you're you're done you're, you're, you're you've 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 become a man yeah and I was and I was like excuse me um, uh, I, I'm owed another, a couple more inches of yes, height we've got like, two or three more inches here like keep going um, and funny. I remember the day that the doctor when it, we it was probably freshman year of high school and the doctor was like I think this is it and I was like excuse me sir <laughs> I should be taller. <laughs> Like, I was like, you can't, you can't mean that. No, and then all through high school, I pray, I was just hoping I would grow at least an inch taller. <laughs> oh man, you are beautiful the way that you are, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi Ned, I see you in chat, and that's something else that happened at Disney. Uh, Ned was there with his lovely wife, and we met up and watched the fireworks at Magic Kingdom, and it was so great, so 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 much. What are you doing? Did you freeze? Or no, you didn't freeze. Yeah, what are, what I did you freeze. Yeah. If, no, yeah. I, I, I didn't freeze physically the computer. Froze. I physically you froze. You physically froze. <laughs> my brain froze. Yes. Are you okay? What did you just say? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. What's Sorry, the last thing? I was looking thing up. You heard? I was looking up if my mom lied to me. <laughs> why? To why? Why would she lie to you? <laughs> okay, there's a story there too. We'll get back to the fireworks in a second. <laughs> Oh my Sorry, god! Go did, ahead. No, no, I have fireworks. to. Fireworks! You, 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 you saw Ned at the fireworks. Where? Where did I see Ned at the fireworks? At Disney. But, but where in Disney? I don't know where the fireworks happen. Sean, fireworks happen everywhere in Disney. That's not true. They don't have. Well, no, they don't happen. I mean, have fireworks are in the sky, so they can be seen from most okay. places at Disney. I'm sure. Where did they don't we... happen at Disney? They happen in the sky. Where did we watch them from in Disney, though? I said the name of the location. This is your and lore I, quiz. And I told you. <laughs> straight up that I wasn't listening. <laughs> I can't argue with that. You, should, you definitely did. I'm listening now, but you're not telling me. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> okay. We were in Disney in the Magic Kingdom where the castle is, and we were standing on Main Street, and we had a nice little chat, and then we watched the fireworks. And it oh, was my great. God. I could have guessed that. You made it sound like it was a specific place. Could you name the Magic Kingdom? Because you didn't. I swear to God, my brain was saying thing like Magic Kingdom. I don't because believe that's you. it. Because I don't know I what Magic Kingdom is, Shannon. I think all of Disney is just Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I don't know anything about Disney. I've never been there, <gasps> and I don't plan to go. Oh, I'm taking you. But I'm not a Disney person. Oh, but you I mean, I, I don't so hate Disney, fun. but I'm not. A, I'm not a, a Disney. I don't like. Theme parks. Do you like Star Wars? Because I'll take you to Hollywood Studios. I do. Studios okay. Okay. We'll okay. Have, you got we'll me there. A, we'll you got me there. You got me there. I yeah. would go to the Star Wars part. <gasps> the Star Wars part. That is not in Magic Kingdom. <laughs> that is See, in to Hollywood me. Studios. I'd rather. But that's the thing, though, Shannon. This is this is this is the type of person I am, though. I would rather spend the money I'd spend going to Disney to just go to a random mountain 
in Iceland. That's and, fair. Uh, so would Josh. <laughs> exactly. Me and Josh are the same that way. That's fair. Um, and that we would we would spend the money to just be like, yeah, you see that rock over there? It's 50 million years old and it's got a carving of a sheep on it. And I'd be like, you'd make up a story. <laughs> about you, you, you know, it'd be like how you would feel meeting, you know, I don't know, a character at Disney. I'd be like, look at this rock. <laughs> look, it's Princess Aurora. Some guy did this. <laughs> Some guy 50 million years ago was like, <laughs> look at this stupid antlers I'm drawn <laughs> and his she, kids were like she, dad you're not an artist antlers. i said, meant to say uh stag um but you said sheep now i'm picturing a sheep with antlers maybe they did back then because <laughs> <laughs> it's 50, it's fair because it was 15 million yeah, and million also you know ago. they were like look at this fucking sloth that's 25 <laughs> feet tall it's a and fucking I, sloth there were that, well, maybe not 25 feet, but they were giant sloths roaming North America that, back in the day, Shannon, until we killed them all to eat them. Don't say that in front of Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt. Uh, by the way, everybody. To your tunes. My, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, by I'm the sorry. way, everyone, it's a little, it might be a little quiet right now, but we do listen to Dungeon Glitch on uh, uh, the Power Hour. I mean, we could be come silent. Out on Spotify. Really great lo fi music. Really great for studying and crafting. I like to listen to it when I paint minis. We could be quiet for a second so everybody could hear it. Turn it off aggressively. Not that aggressively. Oh, I know. You're the one controlling me. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but thanks for stopping in, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of 50 million years old, let's uh, talk Speaking about... of the forces of nature uh, penetrating their way into the modern life of okay. folk. Okay. <clears throat> All right. That works. <laughs> the, uh, the elemental <laughs> tumult of Aradun right now is forces of nature from many years ago that forcing the, their way the into the lives term. of contemporary people. So Shannon, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. the fuck happened two weeks ago, and then one well, week ago? Well, it just so happened, Sean, that I have copious notes from two weeks ago. Um, well, I oh, you know what? I gotta open up the spreadsheet. Oh yes, we need to do that first. Yeah, because we're keeping track of your grades this year. Yeah, the... <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and uh... God, two weeks ago feels like like eons, just eons. What happens if you don't play D and D? I know. So, okay, Shannon, Shannon. Sean, Sean, Sean. We have three criteria here. We have yes, your we real grade. Yep. We have the grade that you think you should get. Mm -hmm. Then your predicted grade. We need well, your you predicted that, grade right yes, now. You did that in reverse order. We do the predicted grade first, then we do what I That's think I, I should get. <laughs> then we do what I think I should get, and then we yes, do. Yes, yes. I, I wrote it down thing. in the other way in the spreadsheet. Um, why? <laughs> Because why? Working we came, you know why? why? You know why? Because we came up with it as I was making the spreadsheet, and mm. I wrote grade. You know, I you wrote could... grade. Then shink you should get. I don't care. <laughs> <That's how it laughs> is. What's the grade you predict you're gonna get for episode two? Hmm. For episode two, you know what? I think I'm gonna get an A. I think I did a pretty good job this all time right. with the notes. Infallible predict. Infallible recap. Yeah. Uh, all right. Episode three, not counting the first half, obviously, because you weren't there. I was not there. Yes. Um. Uh... I mean, it's combat. It's not. Yeah. Well, there was stuff that happened after combat. True. True. So you know what? Fuck it. I think I'm gonna get an A too. I got a lot of details. Excellent. Excellent. I got a lot of details. All right. And Stefan, what do you think? No, 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 no. He's not. He was not a, a column on that spreadsheet. <laughs> All right. Uh, episode two, Shannon. What happened? Episode two. This occurred on. Uh, I don't have the current the the game day, but it occurred on the twentieth of February, twenty twenty three. You don't have the game day. I did say it. <sighs> did well you know what <laughs> you shouldn't have said that <laughs> the last i know the last time the the last time i said the date and then it was vehemently oh i think stuff uh i was i was uh shot the fuck down when i tried to say the correct date on monday night wait no you were so... you were shot down because you technically said the wrong year but i fixed it 
I have the nice. Gwenvalier Day and I have the Aldalore Day. And when I said mm-hmm. the Aldalore Day, you and Stefan no. were like, nah, 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 nah. Um, it wasn't me. I didn't do that. Okay, I have the bud. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, probably was off screen. So, in, in, in do you want the the date from the the one I have written down? Or I want the date uh, that Sass would would use. Okay, the date that Sass would use would be the fourth uh, of Septim, uh, year eight twenty six, and it was Belen's year. Correct. Yeah, Wait, I knew it was right. Belen's yep. Belen's and that's what I yeah. said. And the two okay. of you were like. Uh, just like that. I didn't. Just like no, that. Why did I? Did I? You backed Stefan up. So in my ears, that's oh, what I heard. Oh, it was funny. Yeah, because yeah. it was funny. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> so... Only Gwen Valori dates from <laughs> Stefan. Um, I mean, it makes sense for. I we're, mean, truthfully, we're Sass vying grew for up. being top note taker this uh, this campaign. Oh really? So I've just decided. So I'm so you should to... you should write both dates then every time because that'll I'm going to just for the security of it. I'm going be a better to better note taker. Okay, what's the what's the Gwen Valeri date? Of what? Of what you just said? Oh 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 oh! oh. The fourth of Maravala, year thirteen twenty six, Talva's dog. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we went over this <laughs> two weeks ago on the Power Hour, and then y'all <laughs> you fucking gaslighted me <laughs> on <laughs> Monday. So I don't want to fucking hear it. Oh wait, that's right. We 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 were we were, we were wait were we were we mean about it um, during the power hour or during no, the actual session? During the actual session. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're correct. You're yeah, correct. I know I am. I experienced it. Anyway, C- carry on. Now we've got the dates correct perfectly. <laughs> Great. I know they're perfect. <laughs> oh, there are Vesenblatts floating in the sky, also known as jellies. There are floating mm-hmm. jellies in the sky. Uh, session two mainly took place in Fairhold at the farmer's market. We had just left um, Hyven. We had just it. left okay, Hyven. Yeah. I was like, Halcyon? Nope, that's not right. Hyven. You said Halcyon last week. I did. I or did. two weeks ago. And I stopped myself for exactly that reason. She's learning. I'm learning. <laughs> learning has taken place. Um, so, uh, right from the get-go, Sass starts doing her shit, and she goes over to Alvarium, Al- Alvarium? Yeah. The Alvarium's mm-hmm. produce Jonas stand. Alvarium. Jonas Alvarium's produce stand. She tries to steal an apple, ends up with four misfit lemons. Um, and the way that she decides to steal, try to steal an apple is to, to take it and replace it with a newt's eye which is one of her spell components that she had so she was trying to do this little bartering thing because that's how it works because she refuses to spend money trying to pay with not money (laughs) (laughs) hey i ended up with four misfit lemons it was great because he felt bad for you he did his exact (laughs) words were i can take pity on a pauper (laughs) (laughs) i have that written right down uh at another um another kind of stand there was a drow elf cook named brizza um Mm -hmm. and the brizza was uh not selling food but was like a cooking station so you could pay to have your food cooked up nice and seasoned particularly with alvinurian violet is that is that how you say that avenirian avenirian not alvinurian Avenirian violet, which was a spice. Yeah, you'll find uh, um, consistently wherever you get food that is weird, like has like a, it's almost magic like properties to it, will typically come from Avenir, which is a city in uh, a different part of, of Alfdal. Great. Um, so Bruce and Larue, um, who's uh, who is Jacquet has introduced himself as Larue to the group, so we don't actually know his name is Jacquet. Did not a single one of you know no. him by Jacquet, no, right? No, not yeah. a single one. Nope. Nope. For some reason, I thought that he had said his real name to you, and nope. Nope. No, you're right. It has been a Larue since LaRue. the beginning. Yep, Larue. Uh, they buy duck from Davindo, um, mm-hmm. and they have it seasoned by Brizza. 
Uh, and uh, LaRue has Robespierre cut up the duck and so that he doesn't have to do it. And they enjoy a Who's lovely... Robespierre? Robespierre is LaRue's unseen servant that does uh, menial tasks for him. Like cutting up duck or taking notes for him or just doing all the other things that he doesn't want to do. Um, there is a band that is playing at the at the the farmer's market it consists mm -hmm. of a woman a fearbold man a half orc a halfling woman and a half elven woman named fiora bendega the people's bard and she appears to be the leader of this band um and she put on this lovely show with the band uh saying a lot about uh, nature and the elements and it was really beautiful excuse me um, and uh, Fearn in particular was very moved by her performance so he goes to find her after the show and give his appreciation um, and then I have I have something written here that says red dandelion episcator's row what is that? I don't know. Let me guess. A flawless, flawless recap you boasted. Let me guess. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, it is a place where the Aradunai like to gather. Don't look at the chat. <laughs> I'm not. I totally am. Uh, and uh, Fiora tells Fear and folk there appreciate like-minded people such as themselves who really appreciate the elements and the natures lucky guess <laughs> it was not a lucky guess I knew I'd get there eventually I have that written down folk there appreciate like-minded people that is, a, that is a quote it's there uh uh, she also took Fearn's hand and kind of pulled him in close and mm -hmm. she kind of made a toast and said, I didn't get the whole quote, but it says, to finding the gods in the rivers was part of it. Um, yeah, so they kind of bonded over their mutual yeah. uh, appreciation and respect for nature and the elements. Yes, yeah. The quote is mostly the same thing, but about like the mountains and the trees and all that it's okay it wasn't that bad no no you got it i mean uh, you i mean you, you knew it you just doubted yourself i did i do that quite a lot um <laughs> so while that's because i thought you just had the name of the tavern no. written down. <laughs> no 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 it's <laughs> like it was like shannon the note taking <laughs> that you just boasted <laughs> I know. I did boast, and then I got... Granted, that would be I, my note-taking. I would just write the name of the tavern down. And, and I, like... Rely as, on my memory. As I was saying that, I was thinking, fuck, 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 fuck. I, had to, I don't have context for this. But uh, you got there. I did. I did. Good job, me. Uh, while this is happening, uh, Bruce talks to Septimus about the three... Uh, ruffians they've ha they've hired and it's like so uh what do you think and uh <laughs> septimus is basically like i don't care as long as they get the job done um and uh he tries to give bruce four gold which was four out of the five that he got from audubon mm -hmm. um and bruce is like nah nah just let me take a look at salvatore and uh you know kind of like study him because he's a he's a uh artificer and he says keep the gold because septimus needs it <laughs> quite mm -hmm. desperately um so yeah it's a pretty lovely evening um yeah in the farmer's market uh we wake up the next morning uh sass and bruce are snoring septimus is doing his morning ritual fearn is up early larue is making robespierre pack up his things there's those menial tasks uh, Fearn gives Septimus a shield. Mm -hmm. That's the note. Septimus, uh, okay, this is where we, okay. So 
we didn't know who Salvatore was when Bruce and Septimus were talking about him. They were just referencing, Correct. just let me look at Salvatore. Great. But now, as we continue on our merry little way to uh, Septimus's homestead, we make a quick stop to pick up Salvatore, who turns out to be um, uh, basically, uh, uh, Mike described him as K2SO from Rogue One. Mm -hmm. um, his companion that he left in a ruin, and he said, Sal, activate. Uh, Fearn is immediately scared of him. Sass and LaRue shake its hand. Um, because Fearn, I don't think, had ever seen anything like that before. He has. He's just afraid of them in general. Oh, well, he saw he saw the one that we had seen in Session Zero, and that one yes. was not, yeah. that was not kind. Yeah. <laughs> so he... And all of you have heard about it. Yeah. Um, Rogue automatons. Yes. But Salvatore seems pretty cool. Or Sal, for short. Mm -hmm. um, so we cape keep watch for that night we like camp out there before making the uh journey mm -hmm. the, we finish the journey to the homestead fear and takes first watch and investigate cell uh while he's doing that and on a natural 20 he doesn't find anything nefarious but it doesn't make him feel better um but he spends a majority of the watch sketching the circular runes that are on on salvatore um just to give him something to do um, he sees the light inside Salvatore's chest also. Yes. yes. Which is important for the next episode. Which you're yeah, going to do the first half. Says. Great. Something that happened during... No, I will do the first half. But... Is it something that happened? Nope, that might have been during the first half. Yeah, it better is. Yeah, I don't got any notes on that. Um, so, next morning, LaRue asked Septimus and Bruce what to expect. Um... Mm -hmm when we get to the homestead. Septimus describes the basic layout of the homestead. You know, he tells us all about the inside, the outside, the upstairs, the downstairs, the whole thing. I don't know why I fucking wrote that because it's literally all of the <laughs> the places on a homestead. You got the inside, you got the outside, you got the upstairs, you got the downstairs. Like, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, it made sense in the moment. Uh, he tells us that the raccoons explode when they are killed. So be mindful of that. And they seem to be attracted to a certain type of metal, um, which is what Salvatore is made out of. So that is why Septimus hid him before coming into town to find people to deal with this infestation. Um, as we continue on, Fiern and LaRue notice smoke above the trees. The raccoons have built a barricade and they have completely mm -hmm. overrun this homestead. Poor Septimus. Um, uh, so we have we have a brief combat uh, outside in this outside the homestead at this barricade. Um, we make pretty short work of it. Um, Fearn and Sass find the hardened hearts of the raccoons, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Fearn is actually pretty defensive about them. He snatched one from Sass, and then he's like, "I'm gonna go bury them," and like I think maybe out of respect for the elements. Or, yes, or, seems generally speaking, he yeah. viewed these raccoons as infused in some way with the spirits of the elemental world. Yeah, so he's he's trying to to offer some respect in that sense, uh, and then Septimus is like, "Uh, don't do that on my property." Um, and the last because thing... Septimus has generally, and this is an important note for him, shown mm -hmm. an aversion to elements. Mm. I wonder why. Maybe it's not just because these it's the raccoons. Maybe there's something more like something that happened in a backstory maybe maybe um the last thing that we find before we ended that session was a wooden plank that was either written or burned onto it i don't remember which one it was sort of a it was, was roughly there? scrawled in like chalk or not chalk like cart charcoal it said raccoon town and that spelled is where terribly spelled terribly because you know <laughs> fucking raccoons wrote it um and that is where we ended session two and we picked up in session three mm -hmm. your turn and then i'll pick up I... oh. we need to grade okay so shannon mm -hmm. you said you would get an a i did how do you feel now what do you think what is what do you what do you think you should get based on the delivery you had gave a minus I don't think it was my best recap. 
but I don't think I left anything out. You, I would agree, 100%. I think that this was um, uh, a good recap, and you didn't leave anything out. There's only one thing that you missed, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. What is? Um, which is just when Fiora and, and Fearn were talking, mm -hmm. um, she gave him a hand-carved mug. Which is is not necessarily like a huge deal. And I remember I that I remember that happened. I wouldn't take too. any points off for that. It's just that yeah. is, it's a it's a it, it's not a like oh this is hug this is the glorious mug that leads us to this. <laughs> it but it's like a it's that. a symbol of a relationship developed mm -hmm. between NPC and, and character, which are important yes. in this campaign. Yes, they're very much developing important. relationships are incredibly important in yes. this campaign. Yes. These are going to be a lot of recurring NPCs because you're it's kind of like. An, the last campaign is continental wide. This one is rather closed, and, and it's not necessarily that they can't go out other places of the continent. But mo a lot, they're going to be here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um. Excellent. Good job. Thank that was you. a good recap. Thank you. A minus. We'll a go with an A minus okay. for the, the, the grade. Great. I can do. I can live with that. Um. You know what's funny is the way what? we're doing it now mm -hmm. is is collegiate in a way that is not we did weren't doing it before, and mm -hmm. that. You're these are these are you're gonna get a GPA at the end of this. You're not gonna get a oh like a goodness. grade because because that's how you, you unless I'm giving you number grades. Yeah. That's how yeah, that letter sense. grades are GPA yeah. calculators. So I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. You'll have a university University of Hartford GPA. Excellent. <laughs> from, from a I legit. Oh, I should have just <laughs> that's right. to the internet. That's all right. Uh, um, from like from a legit professor. This is great. Exactly. You're going to get a real GPA oh, from a real professor. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> um, okay. So um, I'll give a quick uh, recap of what you missed, and then we'll jump into you recapping the second half. Because truthfully, you didn't miss much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we opened up on the party having um, recovered from, uh, starting to recover. You Basically, you all, all were taking a short rest when we, we, we started up because Sass was pretty hurt. And the party could use some health before going into the next part of of the fight. The party is roughly like twenty or so minutes from um, the homestead because it's from where you fought the raccoons. Um, that was about like twenty or thirty minutes into the path. Mm. Septimus's homestead is about an hour off of the main road. Got it. Um, so you had far. some space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so the party's taking a rest, and while they're taking a rest, now. This is where Sean would get an A minus. Um, I'm I don't remember if Fearn talked about this at the end of the session or during this rest, mm -hmm. but there was a point when Fearn talked to um, uh, Larue. Um, I'm pretty sure it's at this point because it would have been before the fight. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he basically was saying, "Do you trust these people?" Um, specifically, Septimus, mm -hmm. because of the automaton. And Fearn was particularly harping on the fact that his theory was that this automaton was had a bound elemental within it, mm. and that was the light that he the saw light, the yeah. night okay. before. And and naturally, um, Luru was like, why, "Why do you care? Why do you care?" <laughs> <laughs> I can just hear that. Why do you care? Why do you care? Um, yeah, like why does this matter? Why does this matter? <laughs> we are just doing a job with them. <laughs> um, uh, and you're right, Stefan, it was before the fight, because it was while you guys were resting. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, Fearn is, is extremely skeptical of, of this, and it is bound up in his feelings for the elements. So once they've rested, the party um, starts to make a plan, and they spend a very long time discussing the plan. They discuss uh, using Sal as bait. They talk using Fearn as bait. They talk about, they discuss um, uh, LaRue sneaking in and getting some scrap metal to use as bait because Septimus said the raccoons have a proclivity towards metal. Um, <clears throat> and the plan they land on, um, yeah, that's right, so something's never changed. <laughs> um, but isn't that D&D? &D? The party spends 40 minutes coming up with a plan for it to go haywire immediately. But the plan they did come on upon was that uh, uh, LaRue would scout ahead figure out how many raccoons there are. And then if if possible, it, it, whenever he has a clear path, he was gonna go to the um, workshop to steal some some scrap metal to lure the raccoons out. Um, 
LaRue sneaks ahead and identifies um, one scout raccoon who's hanging out in front of the homestead and what sounds like two or three inside fucking around. Um, so the party decides to, to move forward. Um, they stealth up. Uh, predictably, they all fail their stealth checks except for LaRue, um, including Sass. Um, I, miss my rogue, <laughs> I miss my rogue stats so much. Um, so the raccoon in the front hears them and starts coming to investigate. It doesn't necessarily see them right away because they are in the tree line, although I, the way I did describe it was that Septimus thought he was hidden but was basically just looking out <laughs> from a tree, and Bruce was right behind him doing the same thing. Amazing. Um, while uh, Fearn was... Um, Fearn was actually the closest, I think, to passing the stealth check. Um, Fearn and Sass. Although, no, Sass rolled low. Sass only got a six, seven, I think. Um... But anyway, this raccoon starts coming forward, and as it starts to come forward, it begins to emanate frost magic. Um, Fearn, recognizing this, steps forward and puts his armor of Agathis on. Um, and Fearn begins a delicate dance with this raccoon <laughs> uh, that included snacks and demonstrations of magic that ultimately led to this raccoon being friendly to him. Amazing. Uh, it came up and started snacking, and then it crawled up on his shoulder. And um, while he started just playing with this raccoon, that's when uh, um, LaRue snuck snuck ahead. And LaRue actually does get to the workshop. But as he gets to the workshop, the raccoons inside start coming out because they hear the commotion outside. Because... While Fearn is basically playing with this raccoon, he looks back and Septimus is going, kill it, <laughs> kill it. <laughs> um, and Fearn, of course, is hesitant to do this. So they come up with a very quick plan to take the bird cage that uh, um, Bruce has and throw the raccoon in there, um, basically. So basically, so Fearn is walking back, like holding this raccoon towards them as they open this cage up and they get the raccoon in there and it immediately starts losing its mind because it didn't, it was just like, oh, I'm fine. And now right. I'm trapped in a cage. It freezes the whole cage. Um, so that the raccoon is just like, this cage is shaking around with this raccoon, <laughs> freezing it with its like frost breath. Oh, no. And that's the point when the two raccoons come out and one of them leaps on and attacks Bruce. I'm sorry, a uh, uh, Fearn. That's when we roll initiative. This results in a bunch of wild shenanigans <laughs> that all spread around several raccoons showing up and the party kind of moving around. Um, uh, all the while, um, uh, LaRue is sneaking into the workshop. They quickly dispatch of uh, one of the two that attack and then the other one runs away inside the house. And this is when the party then comes forward. Um, Fearn, pointing his sword at the house, gives this taunt, basically saying, like, come out, all ye raccoons, and fight me. <laughs> he does not exactly what he said, obviously. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is where I, I don't want... Yes, okay. The, the exact same time this is happening... Mm. Uh, LaRue is looking through a door and yeah. holding his crossbow out and fires and kills one of the raccoons. In one shot. The one that had ran in. Uh, well, they had already been injured. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, as Septimus said in your recap, they explode when they die. Ooh, uh, yeah. So it's as soon as Fearn does this threat, the front door of the house just blasts off its hinge <laughs> as this raccoon explodes with force damage. Amazing. Um, <laughs> What comes next is the swarm of raccoons comes forward, yeah. uh, and 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 Fearn walks into the house to to take them. They surround Fearn, or actually, you know, Fearn's right at the entrance. They come out and they surround Fearn. And they dash out to surround him, and this is when the fight really takes place. Um, and uh, they start killing them. Fearn takes a lot of damage from raccoon explosions. Um, He's a tank. He's, he can take. <laughs> and take um, it. he does actually really well with tanking it. Uh, all the while, like, scooping up raccoon hearts here and there. Yep. But it's at this point that uh, LaRue notices in the backyard by the workshop or the shed is the shaman raccoon. The shaman Or raccoon. the raccoon prime. <laughs> but he casts a, um, dissonant whispers on them. Succeeds, 
and they run away Ray into the forest. Of course, only to return a few few turns Rosalina, later because yep. it's only a one turn effect. Right. Um, and uh, I believe this is around, it was like around this point that you came back yeah, because they were, you were in the midst of fighting like, many of the raccoons. And I remember there weren't the a, they had killed a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, there was only but, like two maybe you left would on arrive the, on the board on the board when i yes, got there you came back when the when the raccoon shaman kind of showed themselves in the fight yeah um the raccoon shaman arrived and uh gave a loud bellowing you from vo uh, vocal cords that shouldn't be able to talk mm -hmm. looking at septimus, septimus. um yep, demonstrating that, that this raccoon shaman uh knew language in, mm -hmm. in some sense probably wrote the raccoon town sign um, but I think this is a good place for you to take over. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know, we finish up the fight. Yeah. Look at look at that fucker. Just I love that you painted the inside of its mouth green. That's it's so perfect. Uh, so yeah, we make pretty uh, short work of the remaining raccoons, um, but they explode when they die, and many of us were actually I think it was just me and Fearn who were in explosion range, uh, uh, which yes. dropped me from 17 HP to three. Um, I'm mm -hmm. quite happy it didn't drop me completely. I was very much expecting it, but yeah. Uh, actually, no, I think uh, the, first, the first note I have is talking about the endlessly spinning dice, LaRue's endless spinning dice. Was this because he also That's at was... the after the fight. That's after yeah, the fight. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have... I have combat with raccoons. <laughs> so I just assumed okay. you would take care of the combat part. Well, a lot of that... Got, you were there for a lot of the combat. Yeah, I know, but I, just, I don't take notes during combat because uh, I'm paying all right, attention. All right, actually, this is a good point, Shannon. What do you think you're going to get for this recap? We already, we, already did, we already did this one. I we said... Didn't, we did it, not do this one. No, we are did you the sure? first one. I thought we did this. Oh, one you're too. right. You said an A. You yeah, said an A. I'd like to take that. A. I'd like to take that back. <laughs> nope, it's too late. Damn it. Because <laughs> um, there's a. F I mean, the combat's combat. It's not like it, the combat you saw was combat. Um, but the, you know, to to give you a little details of what happened in the combat, my tentacle the, was probably out. the most. I know that. The, yeah, there was a tentacle. Um, <laughs> Probably the most the most character driven thing that happened is Bruce did not participate in the combat. Yes, Bruce um, ran but, away. Yes, and Bruce, uh, our kobold artificer, played by Alex, um, dropped a trap down, a snare trap, and and bolted. He ran away, um, terrif like not like like ran away like fuck these guys like scared, no. yeah, very like, scared. incredibly scared of of the violence and conflict. Yes. Um, and that's that's important. Yes. Um, but despite him not attacking once and only casting spells to protect himself, um, his snare caught the big raccoon mm -hmm. and was a big reason why the party was able to take yes. it out because it was restrained, it was restrained and they had advantage on their attacks against yes. it. And it, could, it couldn't move. And yeah, 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 yeah. That was that's that was that, that which was big. resulted in the victory, um, which came with. Who got the killing blow and what did it do? <laughs> it's the reason for your first note. Okay, <laughs> Larue got the kill shot. Yeah, but but what but what made it in specifically important? The reason the dice are spinning it. It's like. He failed a wisdom saving throw. That's one thing that <laughs> happened, but something happened before that that caused this. Double nat 20. You got a double nat 20. That's right. That's right. Double nat 20. You sure I can't take back that A? <laughs> I, was, I mean, you're I was saying it as if it like I'm like somehow like taking extra points away for your <laughs> that's predictions. That's what it feels like. Or that's what <laughs> but I'm, I'm not. making it making it feel like to myself. <laughs> um, he gets a double nat twenty, um, and as he fires off his bolt, um, out of his sleeve precariously falls, uh, sort of like how the One Ring always falls precariously off of Frodo. On you know. Uh, a set of dice, and this is actually the first time they're revealed in in the in the, the campaign. This came up in 
session zeros, but he has these pair of dice that fall out of his pair wrist. Pair of dice? <laughs> Can't believe this. that's the first time we've made that joke. These dice are in all of our session zeros. Um, but uh, the dice land... So as he in real life got the double net 20, these dice land and they both land snake eyes, two zeros. Two ones. And for ones, sorry. And he um, he has a, a, a very quick vision of himself stranded at sea. I have the vision, I wrote it down. Okay, go ahead and write that. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, yeah, if you have more, please go. I, I, more. <laughs> I just assumed you had no more notes, no. except for LaRue's endless spinning dice. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, then t you take over now. He hears the ocean, he sees a dress, and he's trapped at sea again for a moment. Uh, and uh, did we mention, I don't want to say the name if we didn't mention it. Did we mention the name of the voice? That, did he hear a voice? Um, a woman's voice? He did not or Did he hear... see a woman's face? He, actually, oh, I'm forgetting now. Stefan! If she was involved in it. But basically- I want to say it was, if, if she was, it was I don't think there was. I don't think there was. I think it was, it was her it was, dress, it was, it was, or it was implied. It was her dress. her dress. But that, so basically, from what we understand from session one, somewhat hinted at and, and discussed, is that Fearn and Jacquette and Saskia were trapped at sea for a while on a, on a, a floating a vessel that yep. they had built, a raft. Um, so he received a vision of himself. For a moment, he felt like he was back trapped at sea. None of his friends there. Just and he was just him. looking up at this flapping dress on the mast, which was a dress that he had placed there. Um, I'm not gonna go further into it because we haven't. it hasn't happened on stream. But basically, he was reliving being trapped at sea, but alone. Alone, and he gets um, this. Uh, he gets a feeling of that there's bad luck ahead. Yes, yes, he gets a feeling of of, of dread that yes. he feels in his stomach, um, and then he comes back to reality. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The next note I have is that Fearn is looking for and finds pretty much all the the raccoon hearts and they're they're all very uh hard and prismatic um mm -hmm. he also finds the damage charm that the shaman raccoon was wearing which i yeah. believe was it like amplifying the damage or like was it, was it like a spell focus a spell focus got it um septimus finds a bucket of prismatic goo uh in the workshop um, which we, uh, or he determines is the salvage remains of a vescent blot, the floating jellies in the sky. Uh, LaRue takes the, takes that bucket of goo. Um, and while he's goes, he goes off with the bucket of goo, Septimus goes to find Bruce, who we mentioned ran away from the fight because he was very, very scared of the violence that was happening. Um, uh, he is trying to hook the cage containing the frost raccoon um, mm -hmm. because that that uh, presumably from in session one we had met uh, Delvana who is a friend of Septimus's and asked mm -hmm. for a essentially a, a specimen to study of the, uh, yeah, the raccoons. Yeah, she asked the group to capture one of the raccoons alive. Yes, so we did. Um... And uh, Septimus then asks Bruce how much it's going to cost to fix the house. Bruce says to check it out and he'll throw in a discount because they're friends. Um, meanwhile, LaRue gives Fearn the bucket of goo and he doles out the silver reward to Fearn and Sass uh, that Septimus had given him because um, we did the job. We rid the, rid the homestead of the raccoons. Uh, upon further inspection of the damage charm, it is a crude version of a storm elemental, uh, a storm elemental rune, uh, and Fearn feels the dissipation of elemental power at the shed, and he says a very nice prayer in Abyssal to, mm -hmm. again, honor and respect the uh, elemental forces at play here. Uh, and the last note I have here is that Septimus investigates the pantry and finds one preserved uh, jar of Alvanerian voidberry jelly, and he shares it with the- Av Damn it. Alvanerian void jelly. Voidberry jelly. 
and he shares it with the group, and we're all resting. Uh, it's important to note, because this is kind of a quirk of Septimus. So Septimus is like a rather like calculating person. He's usually very straightforward, very, very buttoned up. Um, but you hear him like losing it in there. He's just like, where is it? Where is it? Oh. Where's the jelly? Oh, yes, 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 yes. There's one uh, more. This is clearly his absolute favorite tree in the world. <laughs> um, and the raccoons didn't, they, did they, they, they got to everyone but one. Exactly. They He clearly had like a lot of stores of this jelly and the raccoons had eaten mm -hmm. all of it. Yep. Um, but when you all ate the jelly, you also received temporary hit points. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Because it's magic. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Temp HP. Yes. Um, That's it. You That's also discern that the raccoons might most likely were eating Besant Blot. Um, because uh, Septimus and Bruce had seen a raccoon eating a Besant Blot. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that before the campaign started? How they might be getting their uh, potentially how they're getting their it elemental. Might be. Uh, it's a attributes. hypothesis right now that they were getting it from eating the uh, the Vessen blots. Um, the one thing you all do know about Vessen blots is they appear after great storms. Right. Mm. Um, right, do have it written down? You also found the the hearts were not all hardened. Some of them were soft. It was the heart of the raccoon shaman that was hardened into a gem, like a prismatic gem. Um, and Fearn did gather them all up, except for the ones that the, the raccoon king or shaman uh, ate, because <laughs> while you were fighting them, you That's saw right. the he raccoon would eat, would eat the hearts and, take and on gain that. the yep. elemental qualities of that dead raccoon. Um, but it wasn't just the door that was blown off of Septimus's homestead. Uh, it was also caught on fire for a good portion of the fight yeah. uh, that almost There's trapped the... LaRue in the workshop. Yep. Um, and the second floor was all blown out from a lightning raccoon that had died before the campaign started and exploded. It's not very pretty. Poor Septimus. It's unlivable. No yeah. one can live in it. Yeah. Um, like, like especially because, uh, and I mentioned this at the end, you you guys are only like a, like a month and a month or two out from winter. Mm -hmm. um, like fall is going to start very soon. Yep. We're at um, the we're in like the August. Exactly. Of yeah. The world. It's because like uh, fall is very short in this world. Mm -hmm. um, fall is only really like a month and a half. You, you'll get, you know, September and a little bit of October will be fall, but then very quickly November is a hard winter yep. um, because the, the sun gets eclipsed. Um, and that was uh, session three. Three, yeah. Uh, so Shannon, yeah. Um, what's the grade that you think you should get now? A minus. A minus? Yeah, A minus. <laughs> you disagree? <laughs> that, that is the uh, face of somebody who very much disagrees. <laughs> what do you think I should get, Sean? Uh, well, you know, it's it, not as bad as I originally was going to give you because you did actually have more notes than I thought <laughs> because you thoroughly botched the first <laughs> half of your of the session you attended <laughs> without the uh the comeback in the end of having notes i was i was fully planning on giving you your first uh grade within the c range um <laughs> no you know how those scar me i know i know <laughs> it hurts um but because you came back and had uh you know you had some proper notes um, in the second half of your your time here, and I will I will uh, keep in consideration that you are just coming back from a a whirlwind a drive of a from the airport and a whirlwind of a weekend. But it is still <laughs> these are graded. I'm not, I can't I can't just say I'm not going to grade. So I'm going to grade. You can and I'm going to say it's a B minus. Oh, a B minus, not even a B plus. No. That's two great. That's two grades up, Shannon. That I you know. just suggested. Yeah, I know because I predicted. I gave myself three grades above what you gave me. Yeah, and I think that was rather, <laughs> rather bold of you. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> what? I had to interject quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it, it's fine. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I just brought down my whole average, and I, I'm, I'm feeling, I, I'm feeling. I don't <laughs> like it. 
I don't. Yeah, I can calculate your GPA no. based on these three if you want. No, thank you. <laughs> Let's wait till we have at least five. We'll have a good sample size. I, you know, exactly. I think, um, uh, no, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, pull this up. I guess I should, I guess, it, yeah, okay, they're all three credits. <laughs> you know, but you know what, Shannon, what might help you here? Mm. Is that this one is a one? Is this one is, is one point five credits? Because it's less. Because it, I was only there for yes, a little bit. Exactly. So it's All not right. going to be as impactful as the other ones. Oh, it still hurts, Sean. It really does. I appreciate that you stayed out of the C range. <laughs> the day I get a C, is yeah. the day. I mean, before before you came back and started to to actually, you know, actually really hold, you, hold it. I was like, this is a C, this is a C <laughs> <laughs> recap. But, but like, that was after you had been like, <laughs> about a whole sequence. <laughs> I so appreciate your mercy at both as a DM and as a professor. Um, it was mainly, it was mainly because there was a whole character moment not recapped with Bruce. That's, that, um, that's, that's a pretty big character moment. Yeah, and, it, it, and it's, you know, is that and To be the... fair though, did he start running away uh, before I got there? I mean, he did start to, but, so... but it was also Come the you know, main reason why you, you, you know, you didn't recap the trap part of it, which was the main that, reason the yeah. fight went as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 him, okay, that's what I, running, that's And you were I... still standing, and you were actually here when you were still standing next to him when you ran away. Yep, yeah, because um, I remember was... being like, what the fuck? Yeah. Exactly. You went. What the? Yeah. I so. I remember doing that. So <laughs> you I mean, think I think we're. I you think, know, okay, I think maybe can... maybe if you had argued for a B, <laughs> I would have been more generous. <laughs> I don't. As opposed to you being like A minus, <laughs> B plus. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun of it. Lesson uh, learned. I have full confidence that you will pull this average up significantly. Oh, thanks. Because <laughs> that first no recap was pressure. great. Was great. Was, was amazing. Thank you. So, I, I you know. I, I, I was a little, I, like, I, you know, I just, it was a whirlwind of a weekend. I didn't get to see mm -hmm. my son mm -hmm. before I mm -hmm. came back because he was already sleeping. So I was very much looking forward to it, but my flight, flight was delayed and I didn't get to. So, Mama Blues. <laughs> it's too late. I wrote it down. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, yeah, those are all the reasons you have a B, B minus. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. That's why I also made it 1.5 credits. I've about, given you. You have. Wait, wait, wait. I have one more. One more pitch. If I speculate. Oh, uh, we've always done this. The very extra nicely. Speculation. Yes. Yes. May I have my B? <laughs> Get rid uh, of that yes. fucking mic. Yes. Because it's, yes. it's just. Like I will allow that. Secure. I will allow that. Great. You know. So. So let's speculate. Okay, I'm gonna speculate. Um, I think. I don't know who, but somebody is going to bring up to Bruce, uh, hey, you ran away during that. What's up? What the fuck is up with that? Uh, and maybe we'll uh, we'll talk about that uh, a bit. I think this will be our first uh, our first time, like as a group, kind of maybe diving into who each other is. Um, now that we've seen some uh, of you know, the abilities and stuff that we can do in combat. Uh, maybe we'll recap that a little bit in character. Uh, so I definitely think we'll talk about, you know, why Bruce ran away. Uh, maybe why Septimus is obsessed with this jelly or the jam. Uh, and hypothesize why these raccoons, first of all, how they got hold of the Vesenblatt goo uh, and what possessed them to eat it other than maybe somebody accidentally ate it and discovered that it made them either sentient and or powerful unless they were sentient to begin with i don't know i think we'll have a nice conversation about it and we'll speculate in character on on what's going on with that uh i think we will i think bruce will conduct his uh uh Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Assessment of the house um, mm -hmm. and assess it for damage and see and, and, you know, 
come to the inevitable conclusion that it is unlivable. And so Septimus is going to need to find somewhere else to live. He also has no money. Uh, so I believe maybe this will lead us back into town uh, to go look for uh, jobs. I think we're also going to take the captured frost raccoon to Devana um, and, you know, see what she can come up with there, get some more info. I think we'll do that on the way back because her place is on the way. Or no, they saw, did they see her at the farmer's market? Yes, but she's a neighbor actually of... Okay. Of uh, I mean, they live in the countryside, so yeah. neighbor neighbors. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so maybe we'll go. We'll go. We'll stop by her place first before we go <clears throat> back into town. Because yeah. hopefully, so you would you would be able to like the next morning. It would be like within an hour, like a couple hours. You would be yeah. able to get to. Okay, her place. that's easy. Um, so I think we'll spend some time there, and then uh, hopefully enough time will have passed. Uh, you know, the players know that it's probably not, but the characters are like, maybe enough time has passed for the heat to die down on the whole stunt that uh, LaRue and Sass and Fear and pulled <laughs> at the Otter Business in uh, the Widow's Ward of Hyven, um, where the, there's, there, for those of you who have not watched yet, uh, the first couple episodes, there is a, uh, a, a, a tavern, in a specific part of town called Widow's Ward, uh, no, called the Otter Business, and they have within the Widow's within Ward. the Widow's Ward, they have a death ring uh, fighting match where you know somebody's supposed to die because you you fight to the death. Uh, so the three of them were like, "Let's fix it. Let's let's rig the fight." <laughs> Uh, and that was after Sass had taken out a loan to, uh, <laughs> with money from the she, mob from the mob with money she didn't have. <laughs> Uh, in order to enter, enter the death ring. The, the death ring. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, they fixed the fight and uh, Sass was seen uh, and Sass and LaRue were seen uh, leaving the widow's ward and her not actually being dead. Uh, so there's there's people who are watching them. Yeah, I mean, and... You did threaten the guy who saw you, you know, to not talk. That's true, we did. But but a guy saw you together out yeah. before you left town. Yes. Well, and yeah, yeah. And the, the guy, one of the people was wearing her hat that she had supposedly lost after dying. So. But you got back. Yes. So obviously the heat's not going to have died down. It's the players. Yeah, because it's going to be, you know, maybe it'll have been, depending on how fast you go back. Like, yeah. A week and change. Yeah, you've been gone. Yeah, maybe maybe they're not like actively looking for you. But, but as soon as they what happens, yeah, yeah. they'll remember what happened. Um, but we have to go back to Hyven because we need to go talk to Winifred because she's got mm -hmm. information. Hopefully, if we speak her language, um, her golden language, uh, on uh, a ship called the Bone Rattler that uh, Sass and Fearn uh, have particular interest in for reasons that will hopefully come out on stream. Because we didn't, yeah. I don't think we talked about that yet. Uh, I mean, generally, I think it was mentioned very briefly that they we were on you. that ship. You were on that yeah. ship, and they and they betrayed. You. Because they when betrayed you were us. when you were complaining, you guys were arguing with Labru at one point. Yep. Um, but and we don't know. It was like you guys were fucking pirates. Yes, but we don't know <laughs> the the the. I mean, we the players know what happened, but it hasn't come out on stream yet. So maybe that yeah. will come out as well. Yeah. Um, what do you think, what are your speculations about these raccoons? What do you think's going on there? Hmm. How do you think they got these this, this way? What I, do you think I think, I, I mean, I think they, I think they did eat the, the, the goo and that gave them their elemental powers. Hmm. I don't know how they got the goo and what it, like, Unless somebody, okay, so, okay, this is what I think. Somebody is harvesting the goo and feeding it to forest animals. <laughs> um, okay. Or somebody is harvesting the goo and the raccoons got into it and stole it from said person. Mm. Um, and they that just happened to be an unfortunate uh, consequence. So, like uh... Yeah collateral yeah exactly but the uh somebody's harvesting the goo for unknown reasons for good for bad 
we don't know. But I think there is a, an unknown entity harvesting the Harvesting Vescent Blots. Yes, harvesting Vescent Blots. Um, maybe something in relation to the prologue that we had seen where there was something about an oath um, being mm-hmm. broken. Um, so. And I know it wasn't much, you know, much of an interaction, but what, what do you, how do you, what do you think about Fiora Bendega? She seems like a respectable, a respectable person. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she was called the People's Bard for a reason. She was very friendly to to Fearn, um, and and really seems to believe in, you know, the the power of nature and the power of the elements. So, and this thought literally just popped into my brain. Maybe she belongs to some some kind of cult that worships uh, the. Uh, the natures and the natures, the natures. I, I can't i can't not say it like that i have to that work so hey, that guy would still be alive it's only been 30 years yeah. um so maybe he finally got to aldalor that was his remember that was his that dream was, was to sail the, to aldalor uh the fox the f- silver fox was it the name of his, his ship something like that i have it in my notes i i do too it's in my other notebook um but yeah so maybe she's like, she's not, like, going around, like, parading about this mm-hmm. cult that she's a part of, but maybe, like, I don't know, if you listen to her too closely, like, you'll, or if you listen to her closely enough, like, she's telling you the secret location of the cult, or, like, here's what you need to do to join, or, yeah. like, and that's why I mean, she told, she, I mean, she told, I, uh... Fearing to go to the that's what and that I was tavern. I was just gonna say that like that's maybe that's where I don't know the the like-minded people like together that's maybe that's what it is because I mean Fearing straight up asked her about the Aradunai yeah which uh, is not really come out in in stream but the Aradunai are from what you can glean from what that's been discussed is they are people who are invested in the elemental magics of the world and, and the spirits that they believe occupy those elemental forces. Okay. Anything else? Any other specs? Uh, Any specs just... about your fellow characters? Oh, I'm think... very curious. As... Uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. As Shannon, not Sass, mm-hmm. things going on with, uh, with your boy, LaRue. Oh man! With that that sequence, I, uh, I really don't know. Like it's it's really cool because like just knowing stuff that happened in in session one, like or not session one session session our session zeros, um, just knowing that there's there's something going on with those dice, and there there's some sort of power within the dice. And I don't know if they're just like maybe a cursed object or something, something more, but they, they're definitely, they've piqued my interest for sure. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't have any thoughts on what's going on with them with that yet. And I, I, yeah, I mean, we're only three episodes into the campaign, but, and even in the session zeros, like just like listening to the effects that they were having and like the stuff that he was hearing with it it was just like what is what is happening and the person he got it from got the yeah i'm I'm very excited for whether it's soon or much later in the in the game for uh stefan to tell that story because this is the thing that i think is really interesting about the fact that you guys have had these session zeros Mm. so like session zeros like obviously for folks in the audience, we all know session zeros are there to set up our proper safety roles and yep. um, concerns like that and make sure the campaign is along the lines that we all want. But for us, because it's good for a long-term stream campaign, we did actual sessions with these session zeros so that they can feel their characters out, Just feel, really make sure they want to play their characters, get their voices down, feel like they're confident in the acting. So like, 
you know, they all have their backstories, of course, but they also have these mini backstories that are like the moment before the campaign started. Yeah, just to use really, a directing really term, your moment before as an actor. These moments before Septimus and Bruce have their own, which was this raccoon situation. Like, obviously, they got to talk to each other. Like, they did more than just deal with raccoons. They met each other yeah. and talked to each other and, and whatnot. Same with our other pl players. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that Stefan's character is the only one who had his own part, like portion where it was just him. Mm -hmm. And the other characters weren't, none of the other characters were present. Right. So he has, everyone has their mini backstory. He has his own mini, mini backstory within that. That is um, relevant to these dice, which is cool. Yeah, I'm um, very excited. So it'll be very interesting. Something for all of you also to be kind of like cognizant of. This is a side note, but like, uh, if and when you do tell any of these stories to remember that the audience hasn't hasn't yeah hasn't seen them no that's that's yeah. <laughs> which also but the thing is you have to be you have to give them clearly because neither did Mike and Alex right exactly their yeah. session zeros were as separate from yours exactly for your, their their sessions session zeros right. right were separate from yours so like you when you tell those stories it will be the first time Mike and Alex have are hearing heard them. it yeah exactly yeah which is which is cool I really I like that you know I like yeah. I like that that dynamic that we had set up. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, well, okay, Shannon. All right, Sean. Ooh. Uh, thank you, Daryl, again oh, yeah. for this raid. Thank and you, Daryl. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, that was totally cool. No, it's no problem for you to mention that. This is like the exact show that you would yes. mention it in because we're just hanging out. Yeah. But yeah, totally toss us some, some of your ideas. Yeah. We're, we're always open to hear them. Uh, Shannon, I will give you your B. <sighs> thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Now I can sleep. I am going to put an asterisk next to it, though. Oh, <laughs> the fucking worst. <laughs> I guess that's fair, just to know that it wasn't a wasn't an initially earned B. Yeah, I'm going to. All an asterisk means is that there was extra there was, credit. There was extra there. credit. Great, 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 great. Good lord. This is fun. This is so fun. <laughs> Hey, I'm you know glad what the we thing is, though, is like you have there's so many episodes that like, uh, like if you got an F in one of these, like it would. I would just pull it, pull I, it if back. I get an F, it means I didn't take notes. No, you, it, no, because no, you have your memory. I do if have you pull, if you get no, Shannon, if you get an F, what an F is is me sitting here live because you skipped the test <laughs> <laughs> like somehow like somehow like but like you would have you would have to like maliciously skip the test because yeah. like obviously i wouldn't like like if you can't do the power hour it's not like i would just go live right. without you yeah. or, you know so it'd be the situation where you had you'd have to like have like I text just... me fuck the notes i hate like fuck fuck, fuck the paradise. episode fuck, this. fuck, fuck paradise no i don't <laughs> give a shit about anyone else's character <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't grade from a zero. No, you, know? you are a you are. I grade from a fifty. You are you a benevolent, get, you know. benevolent mm -hmm. professor and a benevolent DM, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> well, I'm grateful that you take notes, <laughs> because it is. That I'm grateful that you and Alex, or you and Stefan. Well, Alex has been taking notes too. Yeah. Um, well, I'm <laughs> assuming everyone takes their version of notes, but I appreciate you and. Stefan's detailed Details. notes. Yes, and it, the, the, it's now, it's on Stefan. I'm calling it right now. Who's going to be the better <laughs> note taker? It's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, that is our show tonight. I yes. hope you enjoyed us bickering and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, Daryl, oh, you have no idea. God. I've wanted to do that so badly. Um, to counterspell and revivify it's like just like i i i'm t i think i'm too weak <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm too weak to do it um i i i love any dm who, who's able to do it but i i'm too soft i think um although stefan today oh, all right oh, before oh, we leave because oh, i no. played D, D with stefan today oh, and boy. he may have been preparing for this in the in the <laughs> audience but that man has, I play a, a fighter barbarian, so my wisdom's not great. Um, <laughs> and the amount of times that he uh, personally attacks me with charm spells. Uh, <laughs> I think that's how he, he gets back at you for shit that happens on Mondays. He casts mass suggestion on our party. Uh, although I will, I will give him credit, he didn't fully read the spell to know how devastating it is if you fail save for it 
I failed, of course. So you know what mass suggestion does? No. So, it, it, you know, suggestion is you yep. give a sentence to a, yep. a character, they and fail the same thing, they have to follow. do it yep. um, for eight hours. But mass suggestion is for 24 hours. Oh boy. So he, he's his, his baddie, oh no, what it, what? mass suggested my character to run. So you had to run for 24 hours? Almost, oh, if it wasn't no. for the fact that, and this is truthfully, I was being kind of a bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as I was insisting on us, on a, I was like, if I'm gonna get mass suggested, we're gonna mass suggest. <laughs> so in the sense of like, I'm doing it, I'm yeah, running I'm for 24 running. hours, unless you do something about it. Um, so, so <laughs> I, I kid you not, Shannon, the entirety of this combat, and, and I'm not actually mad. I'm not actually mad because I'm I'm the I'm the person you can you can do this to because yeah. I'll take it in good sport and laugh about it. I um every single turn on my turn I went five ten fifteen twenty thirty. Wow. And, and I just I just ran, ran back and forth because I was also I'm a rune knight yeah. and rune knights can can grow like like giants. Uh -huh. I was large instead of medium, so okay. I couldn't fit out the door. I couldn't fit out the door. So, <laughs> so all I could do was action dash and move every single turn. And that's what uh, you so did. I appreciate. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, all the way through my full movement, I every turn I did oh. it. Someone tried to Commit move past my turn once and bit. I said, ah, 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 excuse ah. me. I have, I can do things. <laughs> it, it may be only one thing, but I can I do, do things. It. And you know what it took to me, for me to not r go running for 24 hours, or at least running until I've passed out? What? Uh, my party beat the shit out of me until I was unconscious. <laughs> my party beat the shit out of me until I was unconscious for the charm spell to end. And that, After that pinning me in it. a corner with an immovable rod. <laughs> I just imagine your feet going. <laughs> That's what was happening, because they pinned me up, so I was kind of like off the ground. <laughs> Air jail. <laughs> I'm an air genasi. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's excellent. I don't need to breathe, which means I could have ran forever until my muscles stopped working. That's terrifying. Yeah. And we calculated I would have gotten 168 miles away. <laughs> of course you calculated. Sean, who are we rating? Who, who, who are we rating? <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, let me breathe for a second. We're gonna raid our good friend Zeal Zaddy. Yes, they're live with story <laughs> talk, right? Uh, yes. Uh, well, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna, I was answering. Uh, um, <laughs> Daryl, yes, I am a Rune Knight Barbarian. I have seven levels in Rune Knight and three levels in Bear Totem Barbarian. Hell so yeah, um, Bear Totem Barbarian. And I have this badass axe that Stefan gave me yeah. uh, that does lightning damage. Um, and also I can shoot chain lightning out of it with cool. using some of the charges. It's very cool stuff. Sounds uh, like For Jesus as much as I'm it. teasing Stefan for, for, for this, uh, his campaign is very fun. Although he did also charm me with a vampire and I killed the party. Uh, <laughs> I didn't kill them. A wizard stopped before I killed everyone because Stefan realized he actually, Stefan, Stefan realized he TPK'd us. Like it, it was a TPK. Like, cause I, Oops. cause I had been charmed by a vampire if you're harmed by a vampire, it's eight hours that you're charmed. No saves. Oh, wow. So I'm being a good sport. Just start killing my team, my, my fellow players. Um, <laughs> because that's the thing is like, if I get mind controlled, they can't win. I, yeah. I kill, I slaughter them yeah. because I have just such a good build. Right. That it's not, it's very right, hard right, right. to, very to hard kill to, me. Yeah. Um, and with another van, you know, a vampire there that's going to kill them. But, um, and uh, not to mention, uh, Many sessions ago, he also used a booyag on me that was, I was getting, uh, you know, fucking Natasha's hideous laughter. And I was getting all this shit done to me. And I, and I. Who are we raiding, Sean? We're raiding Zilzetti, right? We're raiding Zilzetti. It's okay. I'm, I'm glad Stefan is, is not here for oh, that. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, the VOD's going to go up, so I'll yeah. tell him to watch but, it. <laughs> but no. Uh, um, what the hell? Why did that do that? Um, did you No, do but, to, but to be serious. Uh, it, his games are very fun, and I had a lot of fun. I love. And I felt bad for being. About him. I, I felt bad for for being a bitch about it. <laughs> 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 but I was also mentioned at the time that he was being a bitch about Ekbrol Goth getting uh, <laughs> getting trapped in, in a fear. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> All right, folks, friends. we're gonna raid Zeal Zaddy. Have a lovely evening. Thanks for joining us. Hang out with us tomorrow, tomorrow night, night to see what the fuck happens. Yeah. Thanks for all the raids and good yeah. night. Good night. All right, we raided. <laughs>